Well then, how do you choose the numbers for natural log? The way I prefer is to write this in a way that I'm familiar with, which is y is equal to log base e of x minus 2. It's just the way I prefer it. Now, there's something unique about this situation. You see that parentheses? There wasn't one before, but let me bring you back the general form of the log function. Remember the components of each one of them? In this case, we do have an h value. But since there is no single integer out here, there is no constant k. So, there is no shift. There is no shifter up and down. All we have is a new asymptotal line. And the new asymptotal line in this case is x is equal to 2. So that's the vertical asymptote. And the domain is going to be any number that's greater than 2. So, that being said, here, how I choose the numbers, in this case, it's a little tricky because you have to consider the entire value. If I write an exponential form, it is e raised to what number gives me x minus 2? Not just x. Now it's x minus 2. And the way I like to think of this as is, cover the entire term over here, x minus 2. Then you ask yourself, e raised to what number is the outcome of your choice? Well, I would choose a 1. Remember, any number raised to a 0 is a 1, isn't it? But since we have x minus 2, what should the x be so that the number minus 2 is the 1 I want? Well, you would have to choose x to be 3. Because if you chose x to be 3, 3 minus 2 is 1. And e to the what power is 1? 0. That's how you choose the input. This whole thing, I want it to be 1. But for that to happen, I would have to make x into a 3. So then, you know since we already used the exponent 0, what would happen if I put a 1 there? Well, e to the 1 is generally 2.718. But how does this become 2.718? It has to be 4.718. Because 4.718 minus 2 is 2.718. And e raised to what number is 2.718? Is 1. So there's that one. That's about all I need, Willie. So, let's go ahead and graph it. We know the characteristics of this function. First of all, the base b is e. And e is 2.718, positive, so it's going to go up and to the right. The asymptotal line is at x is equal to 2. So we know it's going to be right there. That's the vertical asymptote. And so domain has to be any number that is greater than 2. And range can be all real numbers. So let's plot the points that we have. If x is 3, there it is. Then y is 0. There's my 3 and 0. If x is 4.178, so here's 4. So 4.718 is like over here somewhere then y is 1. So, oh boy, that 4 got in the way, but you know what I mean. There it is. So now if I draw the graph, it should look something like that. That's how I choose these numbers. Why don't you try this one? Okay, so you said, well, I like what you did. So let me write that into, in a traditional format that I'm familiar with. y is equal to log base b of x plus 1. Is that necessary? Of course not. It's just the way I do it. Then write that into exponential form. We get e raised to what is not just the x this time because they're in parentheses. It is x plus 1. Now from that point on, we could consider what numbers we need to choose. So the first number I would choose is to be 1. I want it to be 1. 
But how does x plus 1 become a 1? It has to be 0. So I have to choose a 0. So 0 plus 1 is 1. So e raised to what number gives you a 1? Well, it has to be a 0. There it is. Now the next number I want to choose is to be 2.718. That's what I will get if I make that exponent 1. So how does x plus 1 become 2.718? It has to be 1.718. So I choose 1.718. Because 1.718 plus 1 is 2.718. And e raised to what exponent becomes 2.718? E has to, the exponent has to be 1. So that's where that 1 comes in. And that's about all I need to plot the points in graph. But once again, the H, the as vertical asymptote, is negative 1. Solve for 0, or solve for the X, becomes negative 1. So here's negative 1, and that's my vertical asymptote. And since E again is base B is greater than 1, it's going to go up and to the right. Now plot this. 0 and 0, there it is. And if x is 1.718, here's 1 and 2. So it's like somewhere here. Then y is 1, somewhere there. And that's all I need to give myself an estimate for the graph. There it is.